manufacturer says this mini mill can only cut a one inch space at the most. We've got a three inch uh, fly cutter in it and we're gonna see if we can run a single pass on a two inch wide piece of 6061 aluminum. Uh, we'll try to run it for 10 thousandths of an inch cut. First it all cost and establish that we're just barely touching it. When we get to the other side, we'll set it at 10,000 according to the dial and do a single pass. Right there. That's what was being cut off with the fly cutter. That's pretty impressive. And that is the finish. That also looks pretty good for a mini mill. Something you need to understand is these R8 cutters are very heavy. This motor has a lot of torque. If you don't tighten the R8 real tight and you reverse the speed, this has enough inertia that it can strip the locking pin in the spindle, and that thing is a pain to replace. The machine is also only bolted down to a piece of half inch plywood. The stand is stable, it's locked, it's got maybe 50 pounds in the bottom. I really should put in metal braces to stabilize it because these cutters are also out of balance. I'll show you. I'm running at 1760 on the motor, that's going to be about 1200 RPM. You hear it? There's spots in it where it goes out of balance. And that's as fast as I'm willing to run it with my belly standing in front. To change the R8, place the lock in. See, it's got, a, it's got two places where it'll fit in. Notice it's like lug bolt tight. Take that out right away before you turn it on and forget because you could cause damage to a lot of things. Make sure this is going up and down smooth. Ah. See, it's 
See how tight it is. That's the fly cutter that we were using. It's Direct R8. You're going to need something made like this rather than a cheap Chinese fly cutter that you clamp in your chuck to do some kind of cut like that one you just saw. Okay, I put in a R8 AT3. I guess it's Chinese. Maybe it's Jacob's. I'd have to double check. I've done so much torquing that I can tell just how much torque you can put on a bolt. You can probably look it up and use a torque wrench. The entire concept of the reverse on the fly is for power tapping. Notice how little travel I got. I got a big vise. I got a big chuck. I got all the big machine stuff on the little machine. But that's so we can show you just how far it can actually go. We're going to punch a hole about a thousand rpm on the motor should be about right it should be about no, about 800 on the motor should be about right and we're going to punch a hole just like this we'll go all the way through now I heard people complain they couldn't drill through a 2x4. We're going to drill an inch and a half, a 6061. For the set. Oops. What happened is we went too fast with no oil. And the aluminum got hot and melted too much. Plugged it. Put a little bit of oil on there and we'll finish it off. So we're going to use one of these Chinese bits. It used to be a Japanese bit, but they kind of bought them out. Used to have a bunch of them. I don't sell them anymore. They've actually outperformed my Snap-on and my Hanson. Uh, it has to do with a little taper cut and a little grind off the side and actually quality. We're going to mark off the... Uh, depth so we're going to stop and reverse the bit right at the bottom we're going to get lined up i had to reset it several times this tapping oil by the way is golden you should get it we're going to adjust the speed down i figure that tap's probably running 250 RPMs and this is the reverse switch so we're going to punch it in wait until it reaches that stop and reverse it that's it done that's the piece of aluminum we machined both sides we didn't do any of the others that's the thread down the middle 5 16 18 threaded rod done very smooth explanation about the new tethered switch is actually still in research and development it's done the problem is it's very time consuming and if you ask me to build it for you now it's going to be expensive maybe the price will go down if i can get it manufactured which is doubtful uh we have if you look at here, we have very precise speed control. We can go all the way down to 200 RPMs on this machine. That's going to be about 120. We can stop every 10 digits. It's very precise. That's done with a three-turn pot rather than a single turn. Normally it's going to come with a single turn pot 
and the three turn pots are custom made you'd have to buy a 10 turn to get something it will work though because it, it is a standard 10k pot the system also has programmable soft start programmable braking it's kind of set up uh, it has reverse on the fly that's how easy reverse is uh, that can be programmed to be softer or faster uh, it has e-stop I'm going to show you e-stop I'm going to apply the brake more to apply the brake more go into the P settings go up to 8 and it's actually at minimum we're going to put it up at 5 the maximum now when we turn this on We hit the stop, it's instant. Break, E stop, stops it right now. You can set that wherever you want. Remember, if you don't torque this right and you're spinning a lot of weight and you stop it too fast, you're gonna strip that pin out in there. Everything you see with this can be achieved with this. The plug is on the wrong side to screw it to this machine. We're working on a reverse plug. Currently, you could mount this somewhere on a stand or something real close to this, and you can achieve the same thing for less money. I would like to mention this. This signal is a standard 0 to 5 volts. These are standard on-off switches. This is just tied into this. It makes it real simple to connect to a CNC system, but you have to use an isolation board or you're going to fry components here and probably in your CNC system as well.